Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you. India gears up for historic consecration ceremony in Ayodhya's Ram Mandir. Hundreds of Indian workers turn up for mass recruitment drive to work in war on Israel. And Sri Lanka to continue drug crackdown despite rights group concerns. And now for all the details. Religious fervor has gripped India as people await the historic consecration ceremony of Hindu god Ram Saidal in Ayodhya's Ram Mandir on 22nd of January. Grand preparations have been taken ahead of the event. Take a look. As India awaits the grand opening of the Ram Temple in Ayodhya on January 22nd, authorities have left no stones unturned ahead of the ceremony. Ahead of the Vedic ceremony, Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath visited the ancient town on Friday to take stock of the arrangements and preparations for the mega event. A large influx of pilgrims has already arrived in Ayodhya. While authorities expect about 4.5 million Hindu pilgrims a month after the inauguration of the temple. Today, we are seeing the temple. We never thought that in the dreams. Because when the temple was in the dream, we were also in the dream. And in the dream, we were also in the dream. In the dream, we were also in the dream. 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 तेतीस करोड़ देवी देवता मान लीजिए आज उत्सव मना रहे हैं आज पूरा विश्व पूरा भारत राम मय हो गया है मीन वाइल एज द रिचुअल्स अहेड ऑफ दिन सेरेमनी एंटर दी फोर्थ डे आइडल ऑफ लॉर्ड राम वॉज प्लेस इन साइड द सैंगटम सेंगटोरम ऑफ द टेम्पल द आइडल डिपेक्ट लॉर्ड राम एज अ फाइव ईयर ओल्ड चाइल्ड स्टैंडिंग ऑन अ लोटस ऑल्सो क्राफ्टेड फ्रॉम द सेम स्टोन द कॉन्सेक्रेशन सेरेमनी ऑन मंडे विल बी स्पीयर हेडेड बाय इंडियन प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी His party BJP had long pledged completion of the temple project which cost more than 240 million dollars. And Indian ministers touted the country's economic progress and future prospects during the annual meeting of the World Economic Forum that concluded on Friday. Union minister Hardeep Singh Puri highlighted the country has climbed from the 10th to the 5th largest economy. While IT Minister Ashwani Vaishnav said the impressive growth was down to factors including inclusive growth, focus on manufacturing and the simplification of bureaucratic processes to reduce the restrictions on companies and entrepreneurs. India has seized the moment. Why do I say that? I say that because you're not just transitioning from the 10th largest economy to the 5th largest economy, you're growing at 7.2% last three quarters, the coming quarter and the next year. All the forecasters and all those who make it their professional duty to assess evolving situations are pointing a good picture. And with 95% confidence interval, we can all make an assessment that whole of the next decade, We'll be growing, India will be growing at 6 to 8 percent, mostly on the upper side of this band, with a moderate inflation of 4 to 6 percent in a very consistent way. Economy is going to be the central issue as India's PM Modi seeks a third term in elections this year. India, under his leadership, has taken steps to encourage global companies to set up their manufacturing units in the country and has ambitions to become a chip maker for the world. Moving on, scores of men queued in India's northern state of Haryana during a recruitment drive to send workers to Israel where the offensive in Gaza, now is in fourth month, has caused a shortage of workers. Masons, painters, electricians, plumbers and some farmers said they were looking for jobs in Israel with some willing to risk going to a conflict zone because they could make five times more money in a year than they would at home. There are a lot of money. If you get a good money, why will the person go out of the place? Why will the person go out of the place? Why will the person go out of the place? Why will the person go out of the place? 
This month, an Israeli financial daily reported that the country planned to bring in around 70,000 foreign workers from China, India and elsewhere to boost its construction sector, which has been largely frozen since the October 7 Hamas attack. Thousands of Palestinian construction workers are now barred from entering the country in the wake of the Hamas attack. Pakistan top civilian and military leaders on Friday carried out a security review regarding the standoff with neighboring Iran. Chaired by caretaker Prime Minister, the meeting was aimed to hold broad review of the situation in the aftermath of the Iran-Pakistan incidents. Tensions had flared up after Iran earlier this week conducted drone and missile strikes in Pakistan administrated territory. Pakistan's Foreign Office said it too conducted retaliatory strikes on separatist militants inside Iran. Islamabad has also expelled Iranian ambassador and has called back their representative from Tehran. The move has deepened worries about Middle East instability that has spread since the Israel-Hamas war. The United Nations and USA have urged both sides to exercise restraint warning of an escalation of regional conflict in South and Central Asia. Pakistan's former Prime Minister and PMLN Supremo Nawaz Sharif kick-started his party's campaign on Thursday for the general election slated to be held in February. At a rally in Punjab, Hafizabad, Sharif was greeted by thousands of supporters who cheered and waved party flags to welcome their leader. Sharif said he wanted to make the country stand on its feet and that there would not have been massive unemployment if he had not been removed from power. The three-time Premier has pledged to rebuild the country's $350 billion economy, which is battling high inflation, an unstable currency and low foreign exchange reserves. Analysts believe Pakistan's powerful military has thrown its backing to Sharif after it was logged in a standoff with his main rival and former Premier Imran Khan, who has been jailed and disqualified from contesting. That gives Nawaz Sharif an edge in a country where army generals mostly decide on making or breaking governments elected by the civil police. International rights groups and the UN Human Rights Commission have expressed concern over an increasingly intensified anti-drug crackdown in Sri Lanka that has led to over 40,000 arrests along with reports of torture and associated public shaming. The crackdown codename Yuktia, which means justice kicked off in December with police and army personnel raiding residents and searching vehicles and individuals. The campaign has a June deadline of ending the drug menace within the country. These arrests are being made very arbitrarily. Uh, there's no reasonable suspicion. The kind of people who are arrested have lower uh, marginalized sort of economic status. The fact that the way in which the operation is carried out, there's cavity searches, there's sort of strip searches also in public, some of it televised. It's really um, giving a lot of concern for human rights organizations. Facing mounting criticism, Sri Lanka's public security minister defended the crackdown on Thursday, wanting to continue the operation in the same way, claiming of steadfast public support. Uh, the UN Human Rights Commission statement I saw, they can issue statements, I will not, this, uh, not stop this operation. We will go ahead and we will do it the same way because we know that we are doing something good for the children of this country, for the women of this country and that is why the general public is wholeheartedly with us in these operations. If we are doing anything wrong in, in, on ground, right, people are not going to support us like this. U.S. State Department spokesperson Matthew Miller has ruled out any perception of not recognizing the fourth straight term of Bangladesh Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. During a press briefing, Miller said that the country will maintain its partnership with Bangladesh on various issues, including trade. But he expressed concern over the election time violence and urged the Bangladesh government to credibly and transparently investigate to hold perpetrators accountable and also asked all parties to reject political violence. The U.S. was critical to the general elections boycotted by the opposition BNP. The State Department had also announced a visa restriction policy long before the elections to ensure free and fair polling. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.